Hello, Leslie. Hey, Monto. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is the moment my neighbor started to do this at home. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't sound uh, through the microphone, but um, I, I'm hearing a hammer quite hard on that building. So I hope I can't not hear anything. But listen, I'm ready for this next session. I'm ready. I can't believe that we're already here. It's already the final session of the day and it's going to be a good one. Yes, it's true. It's going to be a, a good one because we have a lot of good people talking about a quite good and hot topic inside the WordPress community. One of the things we are going to have really near in, I don't know, in in uh, 5.8 in the next version of WordPress, full site editing. Yes. Well, we would like to welcome our panelists. This is a panel presentation, so it should be a good conversation with a number of experts speaking. So they will join us here on stage in just a moment. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Will hello you there. please introduce yourselves? Which order? As you wish. So let's just start with Milana. Just for oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I'm the loudest. Well, you said experts. I'm, I'm here just for the cookies and, you know, to bribe uh, contributors to come to the documentation. Um, also, I'm uh, here as documentation team core rep and I'm do docs focus lead for a new release 5.8. So I should be knowing what's happening, hopefully soon. <laughs> and uh, I'm Milana from Serbia. How about you, Daniel? Sure. So I'm having an issue too. I don't know whether he's blowing leaves or mowing the lawn. I don't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> Can't hear I it. am. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Um, I'm Danielle. I'm from the U.S. and I am the head of paperback web development. And we build custom WordPress websites and maintain them and maintain existing websites and all of that that comes with. Um, and we just launched OvernightWebsite.com. And um, yeah, I mean, so that's mostly what I deal with is the the old and the new of WordPress. So it's the whole the whole range. Thanks, Daniel. Let's go with Colin. Hey, hi there. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, good evening. Um, I'm Kuhn. I'm a, a WordCamp and Meetup organizer from Belgium. Um, I run my own company called Neoc IT, uh, where I provide software consultancy, um, partly around WordPress. Um, I've been WordPress. I've been working with uh, WordPress for a few years now, um, and I like to learn things um, as well as challenge myself uh, while doing it. Um, so for a while now, I've been casually contributing to Gutenberg as a way of giving back um, and uh, mostly getting more accustomed to the ins and outs of the project. Um, so yeah, that's me. It looks like it's me now. So my name is Grzegorz Zhukowski. I live in Oleśnica, Poland, and I work at Automatic, uh, where I spend all time contributing to the WordPress core. And my main focus is Gutenberg, and I was helping uh, to merge changes from the plugin, Gutenberg plugin, to the WordPress core for the upcoming WordPress 5.8 release, which won't contain all the uh, necessary pieces of the full site editing. However, there is a lot of uh, new uh, goodies coming that will be, uh, uh, you know, ready to use uh, in the uh, in, on the site. Excellent. So Moncho and I have come up with a bunch of questions for you and they kind of go from really basic and then they work up and get more and more exciting and interesting. So we're gonna start with the first one, which is actually, this is my question because um, it, I don't know the answer to it yet and hopefully you will educate me. What is full site editing and where did it come from? Yeah, so maybe if I can start. Um, um, maybe the, the best thing to say at first is that full site editing is, um, is not just uh, a big monolithic heap of, uh, of, of uh, a big thing, big function. Um, it's, it's, it's better to think of it as like uh, a collection of a lot of features uh, that come with Gutenberg as, 
part of the second phase of uh, the Gutenberg roadmap. Maybe someone else can pitch in now. Yeah, so if you go on. on well, <laughs> yeah, so if you like uh, take a bigger picture, so full site editing is part of the Gutenberg project. There are four phases and we are reaching this year the end of phase two. The first one was uh, introducing the uh, building blocks for editing content. Now we'll be editing a full canvas of the sites and the next two phases are uh, collaborative editing uh, so to let people uh, collaborate when they are uh, changing websites or writing content and the fourth one is multilingual support whatever everyone is waiting for um i believe that's going to be a big one <laughs> Anything else? Anything else? Because one of the things inside of the last question is what problem does it solve? Which is, I think, very interesting. What do you think? Well, I think that the problem it's trying to solve is to give the user uh, one unique workflow to edit everything. Because mm -hmm. at this moment, you have post, you have page, and you go to block editor uh, or if you are not brave enough, you're still using classic editor and you edit your content there, but then you want to change your logo, then you have to go to customizer, but then you have some team options. And, you know, it depends on team from team, uh, what will you edit and where? And mm -hmm. I believe the idea is to uh, release end user from a need to know everything about the team. You just go there and you just edit. And if you want to edit footer and uh, you are on the post and you're editing post and then you realize the menu is not correct, you edit menu, you don't need to know because nobody cares. Is it customizer or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, people care to know where it is. And it's a good thing that you can see how it looks on the front end, which I think was the initial idea for Gutenberg, but who knows maybe i'm wrong uh so I, I think that's a huge problem that will be fixed uh and solved with uh, full site editing uh, for us who are building websites i know that for every website i have to create a ton of tutorials and everything to show client how to use it and this will solve all that so we will be out of job yeah <laughs> well, i also I like to think that it's it brings a lot of power and, and, and more freedom and flexibility to end users of a website. Because um, in the traditional way of doing things, um, there's, there, there's a few ways uh, one can have a WordPress website. Um, he can um, have uh, an agency have a website built for him, um, or he's, he could be using some sort of a, um, a theme builder, or he could have um, installed uh, a, a theme from the theme directory, or maybe it's even a custom theme. But now uh, end users are able to uh, to just to have so much uh, more power uh, on about editing templates and and editing all sorts of uh, aspects on, uh, on of their website, and I think that's that's really exciting to look forward to. Yeah, I think it solves a couple of problems. To sort of add to that, it it sort of takes away some of the ambiguity around how to edit each individual thing, right? So. I mean, WordPress's whole thing is to democratize publishing, and there were areas of the websites that were just not available to edit to anyone who doesn't know code. Um, so there's this sort of ease of use gap that came about that you know you couldn't you can't edit the the 404 page, you can't edit the header or footer unless an option is available. Is the theme using the you know the site logo that you upload in WordPress or is it just gonna you're gonna upload the image and then the theme isn't gonna show it or so it's sort of it gets rid of those like however the theme developer decided to do it that day and it sort of streamlines a lot of that process to do some sort of expected behavior to make it easier for anyone to hop into a site um, and and edit it and it sort of democratizes publishing on a whole new level. That's a nice way of saying it, yes. Um, yeah. Because right now there's like this huge fragmented uh, world of, uh, of, of all different ways of, uh, of, of 
um, themes that came up with their own way of editing site features and headers and customizing things. Um, but there is no real uh, standard. There, there's no real standard way of doing that. So it just makes it harder to uh, step out of that particular ecosystem, I think. Um, so I'm looking forward to the, uh, the standardized way of uh, doing theming in WordPress. I think you have something. Yes. I want to add some more to it because I think it's important to note that it's not only about unifying everything, but it's also to giving the power to users to change these little bits that annoy them, like the color of the header or the font size. Before you would have, you know, or either learn CSS or learn HTML just to edit that. But now you will have tools that will allow that. And you won't have to call your site administrator to do a simple change. So this will, well, maybe you could uh, tell that remove the job from those uh, uh, those people who maintain those sites. But on, on the other, other hand, they will have more time to work on expanding their offering and improving their own products or you know services just to use that time. So th this is you know something that sounds scary, but on the other hand, it opens a lot of possibilities because uh, the idea of blogs also gives you the power that you can create your uh, several your own blogs that you can use in several websites and you know give additional functionality out of the box for your customers. So re regarding that, this is something new. Something is going to happen from uh, 5.8, as far as I know. Um, what happens uh, to the WordPress uh, websites that are already live, uh, live and in production? Uh, must uh, they be rebuilt in order to use full site editing, or they are going to work in the way they are? Yeah, they have to be rebuilt completely to crash. It'll just crash no, no, when you won't. update, yeah. <laughs> no, it won't. That's big news. <laughs> oh, we were it's not supposed to here. say that, sorry. <laughs> no, no it, it, they, they will not be uh, uh, crashed. Uh, they will not have to be rebuilt completely. As you all know, WordPress always build in mind with what is already out there, not to crash anything. and. In 5.8, not everything will get in. So we will, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, but I think that uh, in 5.8, not you will have to uh, install a Gutenberg plugin to actually use full site editing. So not everything will be there, but it will be foundation for uh, the, the next releases when uh, everything else will come in, but still we will have some nice things uh, coming in and nothing will break. You can go part by part and, you know, uh, uh, rebuilding it and adapt adapting for uh, complete uh, editing experience. Thanks, Milana. Anything to add? To um, yeah, so to maybe Gregor can do it maybe. again. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> Okay, but you can just, uh, I know that, um, uh, well, well, uh, some of the, the, the full site editing features will be added to uh, 5.8, I think, but I, um, but Gregor will probably um, um, be able to uh, say which ones exactly. I'm hearing feedback. An echo, yeah, there is an echo. So it's, it's not some monolithic feature, like we said before, but it's more like a collection of features and um, they won't be turned off all, uh, all at once by default by just upgrading to WordPress uh, 5.8. Um, you do need to have a full site editing theme um, to enable all features, um, but some of them will also be available for non full site uh, or for, or for non blog based themes. Um, things like, uh, like the template editor blocks, um, like the site logo, the tagline, um, the query blocks, um, post, uh, post related blocks like post title, post content, um, they will uh, all be made available in, uh, in the post editor. Um, and as well as that, uh, I think it was also possible to, uh, also, um, not add it, but, um, but add new templates, uh, to a normal theme, um, and edit those, uh, in the template editor. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the first step is to allow people to uh, change, like use the block uh, based paradigm on the single page. So think about that, about like the previously you would have uh, to create a PHP file to change a single page view. And now you will be able to do that through UI and that will create an override that you would be able to delete later, but as a user, so it's most, more like uh, empowering uh, people who have access to the sites rather uh, that's a feature for the team designer. So that's one thing and everything like that is optional so that there will be a flag to disable that. So site owners or team authors will say that I don't want that and they can remove that. The one big change is that not necessarily related to false site editing but is somehow in the same uh, area is the widgets editor, which will be, uh, I don't know what's the final decision, but it will be depending on the feedback from the testing, either an opt-in or opt-out. And uh, so the idea would be that you will be able to use the same blocks you use for uh, on your in your content to use also in, inside uh, the area when you would uh, previously use widgets. And so that's a nice, change if you have your own custom blocks, you will be able to put there as well, which will open those uh, new possibilities and also uh, somehow unify the interface. But as uh, as you could hear that there is a lot of new blocks coming, but it's just addition. It's not something that you have to use. It's just there if you want to try them out, that will be perfect time to do that after 5.8 is out. The and there is a little release tomorrow, by the way. So uh, yeah. uh, if you want to test it, uh, please do so. Um, it's by a lot of users that, that can test and provide uh, feedback on the new update um, that we can improve upon those things and decide what can be added and what should be skipped. So go install it tomorrow. Yes, we should acknowledge that, that uh, everyone here is actually working really hard right now to release, to to create the new release while also attending WordCamp Europe and being here on this panel and thank contributing you. on track too. And I mean, y'all are everywhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. Uh, my next question has to do with stakeholders. So obviously a big change like this to WordPress has multiple stakeholder groups, right? It has like the end users, the users of WordPress websites down the road. It has the editors of WordPress websites. It has the companies who build themes and the companies who build plugins and the people who contribute all of these different groups. I'm interested in talking about the theme creators who currently primarily rely on offering block patterns with their own header and footer and sidebar management. So how does that work with full site editing? Well, I mean, it sort of works the same way. <laughs> um, it, you can offer whatever you want. I think it's sort of a misconception that by giving the users the ability to do what they want means that they'll be able to do anything they want. Um, if you are someone like me who's creating custom sites, you can actually easy, more easy, you know, put options and make it so that you don't have to install a whole extra plugin to add a couple of extra options. You you reserve that for the the bigger pr projects that you're doing, and you know, it's up to sort of the theme creators if they're creating a theme on a sort of wider scale instead of just an individual client. That's up to them to, to decide how they want it to work. They sort of just opt into stuff, they add stuff, they add their custom options, but it's all working within the same ecosystem. It's sort of, we're all sort of speaking the same language now instead. So if you don't want to make it so that your header and your footer and your sidebars are manageable in the, you know, the block editor or in full site editing, then you know, I, I guess you don't have to, you can sort of hard code whatever you want. You can do that now. You don't have to make any options available. Um, but then at some point you're going to start to fall behind in terms of what you're able to do. So it's sort of, it's, it's going to work the same way, just with more possibilities. That's sort of how I go about looking at it. Yeah. And you'll be able to, uh, to turn off on, or on or, or even tweak some of the configuration options um, just using, just by providing a, a theme.json file uh, for those things. Um, um, but also, um, 
Um, I like to think that with full site editing, um, a, a team developer or a team designer can benefit from a more solid foundation um, that is a standard, standardized and optimized for things like accessibility, usability, and uh, performance. Um, that way, more of their time and energy can be spent into building things that actually add value to their customers while all the while benefiting from the existing um, full site editing features uh, and even tweaking them to their liking. Uh, so that's that's a big plus, I think. So they don't have to go and reinvent the wheel every time they build a new website. OK, there is something related to the last major change we saw in WordPress that when uh, Gutenberg appears, where Gutenberg uh, uh, finally was born in 5.0. And, <clears throat> and now you can see that there is uh, a plugin that is the, the old editor. And at this moment, we have like this kind, uh, this kind of legacy. We can call it legacy, but it's still available there. And, and, and this is about my, um, my question is about uh, why there are things that can, uh, can set in the core and another uh, and a different one can be set as a plugin. For example, why put uh, the, the full site editing in the core when it is something that the majority of users at this moment don't know? And uh, well, we hope all of them are going to use it, but as everything that comes new, uh, in WordPress, there is always a, a, a time uh, for getting used to it. So what do you think uh, is the main reason full set editing is in the core and not, for example, in a plugin and people can choose if they want it or not? Well, I think that now that we have Gutenberg in core uh, and uh, full site editing is obviously expansion of uh, what we were using in core by now, uh, I think uh, it would be kind of silly not to have it in, in core and have it as a plugin. Like, uh, you know, when, when you can uh, use, this is just a, uh, just a foundation to put all the blocks that you already have. So it's not like, the structure that you are, uh, uh, you still don't have, you have, there is Gutenberg. Uh, and uh, now you will just expand it to the whole website and uh, there is benefit in having everything uh, uh, standardized, especially for people who are using uh, uh, teams from our repository. So when you switch team, you have all those uh, uh, you know, available things to edit, you know where it is and you have all the blocks available. So uh, that's sense, a huge, yeah. yeah, that's a huge benefit for, and I love that uh, uh, team, team in uh, WordPress.org is uh, insisting on uh, idea that people will change teams and they cannot lose anything. So uh, I love that idea. And I think this will uh, really help having that. So when you have custom teams and uh, people have different uh, ways of editing right now, the header, the footer, or they don't have it at all. Uh, so you, you are afraid to change the theme. And, but with full site editing, you will have all that available. Now, as far as not knowing how to use it goes, well, we didn't know many things how to use. And uh, the thing that we really need right now is, uh, here comes my pitch, documentation. So uh, we really, really need uh, to document everything good because when you don't have documentation, you people don't know how to use it and then they don't interact with it enough. They don't find bugs, they don't, uh, contribute, they don't think ideas, how to expand it, and you don't have con contributors, and there is no cycle for open source. So first we need to do uh, a good documentation. We did uh, uh, fail a bit with Gutenberg getting in, and we can still feel it. We can still feel 
uh, developers who are frustrated and non don't know how to work with it and how to build on that. Uh, so I'm asking everyone to come and help. Uh, and, you know, while doing documentation, you will actually learn how to do it. So I'm not afraid of uh, uh, new things. And I don't think anyone should be afraid, especially because this is not really like uh, uh, a really new thing like Gutenberg was a new thing. We didn't know what it was. Now we know uh, full site editing is what we already know. It's new, but uh, expanded. Exactly. So it's easier to learn. And uh, if we do uh, enough work and we are doing, you know, people in uh, make uh, WordPress teams are doing great job. Just uh, mentioning few and is doing with testing, great job. And uh, Carolina is uh, even have a, a website for full site editing where you can read everything. So it, it's doing better and we can learn and there are resources. So there's no uh, need to be afraid of it. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, even um, there's even a, a seven milestone added to the uh, full site editing milestones um, that it's called uh, gradual adoption um, so that it, it, focus, it focuses solely on making sure that um, that full site editing features are uh, more uh, are, are being adopted um, better and, and, and more gradual um, and that uh, work is uh, being put into actually making sure that the, the documentation um, is is uh, is on par and that are the, the dev notes are um, are up to date and all of that uh, kind of thing. So that's also important. That's also part of the work that's now being done uh, after the feature freeze for the uh, 5.8 uh, features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think um, from oh. my perspective as, you know, someone who's working with it and working with people, um, it's, no one's going to use it if you make it optional. <laughs> That's just sort of people are going to do what they're going to do um, if you let them, right? So I think the the WordPress itself has never, you know, the it's been very transparent about where it's going, um, and we've all been able to use Gutenberg for like years now. Uh, we've been able to install the plugin, and then we've been able to use the block editor in Core for years now. So it's it's sort of like we've had this getting used to period. We've had this. So we're just going in the direction that we said we'd go in. And um, people can still find ways to, to go backwards. They can still install the classic plugin for sites that need it. They can install the classic plugin for certain things. They cannot enable the block editor for custom post types. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to counteract some of that. But like I sort of referenced before, and I've talked a lot about this in the past, at some point you have to sort of embrace the tool that you're using. So you're either going to embrace the fact that we're all working towards the same goal or you're sort of working against it and like basically forking your own version and sort of working on your own, um, which is fine, but then you can offer the latest stuff. And I think it's up to you as a developer to on some level work with things, you know, and meet WordPress where it is, right? You have to sort of give up. WordPress is open source. You have to sort of allow yourself to go with the tide a little bit. And, you know, when, when you have new users who come into WordPress who are installing things, they're not going to know that there was an old WordPress. They're not going to know that, oh, I have to install this other plugin to enable all of these awesome features. You have to sort of think forward. Right. So you have to allow these new users to start installing it and use all the cool latest stuff. And if someone wants to go backwards for a bit, that, that, then they can put the work in to, to do that. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that the full site editing as it's you know soon to be included in the core is always something that we wanted to have. It's not something that came because there was the 5.0 release and the block editor. It's not the other way around. So that we took small the smallest step possible to uh, you know enable people to start using this block paradigm, start learning UI. Uh, we got a lot of feedback, and if you look at the iterations that were how the editor looked two and a half years ago and how it looks now, it's a completely different product. And now also the uh, 
way how he, people started thinking about uh, building uh, content with blocks is different. It's not longer building a small custom blocks, but rather combining a lot of existing blocks into block patterns, into having like a UIs, having ways to change like a big portion of the uh, page with, uh, uh, you know, solutions like now is coming to the query block that allows you to switch how uh, uh, the list of blocks uh, posts, sorry, uh, will be displayed on the page. So we are constantly trying to make it easier for users to provide the infrastructure also for plugin authors, for team authors, so they can build upon that and, you know, have the unified experience of people once they learn how to write a post. They will know how to uh, uh, change the uh, template of the page because it's exactly the same paradigm. It's even in the same UI interface. You just go from one page to another without the page reload. Everything can happen. You can go back. You can revisit how it looks like in, in uh, when you compose everything together. It's no longer you need to go to the preview of the page and see another tab to see, oh, the loose is good, but now something broke outside of the post content. I need to go find a customizers and go to this template or call the team author on the support and change that for me. So this is a huge project and has so many layers on top of that. And you know we want to bring as much as possible, I would say, what makes sense to the most of the users, but not all of them, because there is always room for extenders to build their own uh, solutions on top of that and give this, you know, unique perspective and look and feel for their customers. So I feel like we're tiptoeing closer and closer to this question. So I'm just going to ask it, just going to get it out there on the table. What do you all feel is the big role for the online page builders, the Divi, the Elementor, these big guys, taking into account that we're moving into full site editing, block patterns, all of these things are being built into WordPress core. What is the role of these page builders that so many of us use? So I think that's up to them. Um, I think ultimately they were there to push the envelope. They were there to bring us to where we currently are. I think without them, we might not have had this, you know, extra push. Maybe it would have taken a few more years to put all this into core. We saw, you know, that these builders saw this hole and filled it. And I mean, ultimately they have, they're going to have a different UI anyway. So they're going to have yeah, their exactly. fan base. They're going to have, hmm. yeah, their, you know, whatever preference to editing things, maybe certain things are dragging and dropping, whatever they make available, they're going to extend WordPress. So that's up to them to sort of decide how they're going to go about it. So they're all already currently working with the block editor, all the major ones anyway, um, are if they're concerned at all about future proofing themselves, they've already looked into how to integrate themselves with the block editor. So I think it's only going to enhance everything to see how they go about integrating themselves into the new sort of ecosystem. I mean, you know, I really love, you know, as a developer, I love the way Oxygen goes about it, where you can sort of build stuff and then go and edit it in Gutenberg. And so like, that's a really cool take on it. And so it's kind of just a new way to innovate and, you know, they're going to have their place. And I think it's cool that we now have these established things. We have these people to look to, to see where are the new holes in WordPress? Where can we, you know, go from here? And they're going to continue to just push the envelope. So, you know, I, I love the, the diversity that's out there. When you talk about builders, there's at least four that come to mind. And that's awesome. And I hope that it stays that way and grows. And, you know, that's only going to, you know, help us. And so hopefully it'll take away some of that, you know, Divi does this way and Elementor does this way. So some things are going to hopefully become uniform and then they'll branch out in other ways. So that's kind of Yeah, cool. exactly. Because now there's like there's 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 the, there's a few big ones indeed and they 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 all seem to have their one ecosystem um, surrounding them, which is not uh, which, which is okay because um, as you said, um, they also they all 
uh, they all implement and 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 um, and provide their uh, their own stream of users to the WordPress platform. Um, so it's definitely um, interesting um, to uh, to look at um, and observe how they will interact with WordPress um, and Gutenberg. Um, I know there's uh, most of them already have uh, some sort of a way to either um, include a new template view or something um, as a block, um, or even toggle between uh, between Gutenberg and uh, their own. Um, editor, um, but um, my biggest um, uh, the the thing I'm um, actually quite looking forward to is whether or not they will start using um, the new default way of doing thing doing things so that they can um, they can uh, they can actually um, merit from how um, it is now going to be supposed to be done um, and add on top of that their own set of features and um, new value adding stuff. Uh, like um, the, the the cadence theme, theme for example, is doing. Um, there, uh, in my eyes, it's uh, it's, it's quite a nice way um, of uh, implementing Gutenberg the right way. I'm very interested, interested, interesting, interested to see how they will be um, going to implement full site editing themes in the near future. Because now it's all in the customizer, of course. Um, so yeah, interesting. So um, we were talking about how um, full site editing can uh, can um, affect the, the own uh, WordPress uh, ecosystem. Talking about, for example, what happens with uh, uh, with the builders, builders like TV, Elementor, etc. But what do you think? Uh, Taking into account, you are developers, designers, you are on the technical side, contributors. What do you think is going to happen with the rest of the open source uh, solutions like Joomla, Drupal? How do you think it's going to affect? So it's going to make WordPress better than the rest? Is going to be a real advantage in front of the rest, like uh, Wix, like the, the other ones, uh, not only in the open source uh, reality, but uh, outside uh, WordPress? What do you think is going to happen with uh, full site editing? Yeah, well, there's, oh, there's not one thing they that's better. That's better. Yeah, <laughs> just use. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Drupal also has well, a good Drupal working, of course. Did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but um, there's not like this CMS is better than the other one. They all serve different purposes, and it's it's like using the right the right tool for the right job. Um, and having more competition in the game is uh, is is pretty good actually. I think the the biggest reason that we um, that we as, as WordPress um, have the biggest market share to date uh, in the CMS market is because of the low uh, threshold to uh, to start building websites. And that's partly thanks to all of those team builders. Um, so uh, I think it's, yeah, it's important to reach out and uh, make sure that, that, that everything will, that they will, will keep, keep using WordPress and not just uh, fork off their own version of WordPress because it's open source, they can do that. Uh, so, yeah, um, if we all collaborate, we can build uh, pretty nice things, I think. <laughs> I think we already saw this many times in, in history, but let's just take a look at Internet Explorer 6. It was so bad that we got this good uh, Chrome and Firefox, and uh, it was so difficult to uh, create posts for some people in uh, WordPress that we got page builders. So, you know, this is happening and uh, th there is uh, always this kind of uh, uh, competition between WordPress and Joomla and Drupal, but the truth is uh, they all have their share. Uh, Yar is a little bigger uh, than theirs, but uh, they, they will continue to uh, exist and I hope they will push, they will invent something new and then we will be jealous and we will do something better because that, that's how it works. You know, human mind compares. So that's what we do. And uh, I really don't like, I mean, I'm proud that, you know, 12 years ago I have selected WordPress and now it's 40% and I think I'm smart because I did that. But uh, kind of, you know, I I don't like uh, just uh, one way of doing things. I like things messing up. I like uh, uh, people inventing new things. 
and uh, that makes us all better and everything makes better so i'm really looking forward to see what other uh, cmss will do but also what uh, what will page builders do i i have never used page builder uh as you know someone who builds website and someone who uses website so i cannot say anything but I, i'm seeing uh in our WordPress Serbia uh, Facebook group, I'm seeing people asking questions about it. So I kind of know, know what they are doing and how. And I really hope to see they invent something, you know, insane. Uh, so we will have to push Gutenberg again and, you know, just pushing forward. Yeah, I think it's going to blur the better. line a little bit. <laughs> I think it, um, because you had sort of, I, I just recently had a Wix, to go into a Wix site and it is no longer like Wix or Weebly. It is like Wix or Webflow. And there are these other tools like Webflow sort of popped up as an in-between to like, you know, Weebly and, you know, the GoDaddy builder and, you know, WordPress. And so I think it blurs the line a little bit where you can now visually edit things and you can now edit all like those parts. Like I said, the 404 and like all these other things you can just do now. And so I think it, it sort of blurs the line and WordPress can now fit into more categories as well. So, you know, it, maybe it's not a Squarespace, which is sort of like a template machine that you sort of, you know, stick a bunch of stuff in and it's easy, but it does open it up to a whole nother market instead of just like, oh, you got to have somebody on your side. It now lets opens the door for more people and then now they're ready to grow and now they come to you and are familiar with WordPress. So there's the three or four other markets that'll pop up as well. So it sort of blurs a little bit and makes it a little more accessible. There is also one thing that I'm looking forward to is the blog patterns directory, which should enable a quicker creation of websites instead of going, you know, changing everything yourself. You, if you don't have like me skills for designing, you just pick something that someone crafted very carefully and maybe pay, pay some fee for that and, you know, have unique experience for all the use cases you have. It's not longer you need to use one theme and hope that it has all the solutions you need. Instead, you can combine from different sources and build the best experience you need. So that's one thing. One thing that I'm looking forward to is how I'm seeing the growth of Headless. It's getting a lot of attention at the conferences in the WordPress community. And that interaction is full site editing. I'm looking forward to how we, will that evolve because at the moment, if you want to use headless solutions, you need to build from scratch the uh, front end side. However, if you combine that with the, what Gutenberg can produce and enrich that, that will open a new set of possibilities and that will bring, uh, you know, big uh, companies looking at WordPress because now they will be able to uh, build completely custom solutions and also use whatever good uh, like uh, WordPress provides in its core, rather like treating, treating it as a uh, source of the content only. Well, yeah, exactly. I'm glad to, to do that question. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, you have one what? final thing to add before we sign off. Yeah, well, I was going to say that one one obstacle might be that um, a lot of backend developers have uh, mostly uh, skills in, in in writing PHP and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But most of um, the new features, um, they you you do you really do benefit more if you have uh, a, a JavaScript backend. So I think we should uh, also focus on. Um, helping those um, those developers transition into more and more adopting uh, JavaScript and, and, and React development um, mm -hmm. to uh, develop uh, even better uh, new And solutions. documentation, yeah. Yeah, and the <laughs> most importantly, of course. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, thank you, thank you all for this really interesting conversation. I now know more about full site editing than I do before, thanks to you. Uh, but also, I think our audience does as well, which is fantastic. And again, thank you for taking the time to join us, even though you're also so busy working on the new release and working on this massive change to WordPress. We're really grateful to you and your time. Enjoy the rest of the conference. We will see you later. And thank you. Will you be heading over to the, the Q&A room to talk with the audience? 
Does that sound like, like a familiar thing to you? <laughs> <laughs> we All can. right. Yeah. We can, you, if you, there are questions. Yeah, there and will people be, can also make meetings with you and see yeah. you in other rooms and things. There will be more content related full site editing during the Dieron Work and Build Up uh, in each day, I think, also in the uh, number two track. So this is not the last time we are going to talk about full site, edit, full yes. site editing. Another thing is to say thank you for accepting our invitation more or less in the last minute. So thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.